I am very aware that this video is going to be a very different video from whatever I normally do, but it really became kind of concerning when a lot of people were not able to detect Emily's manipulation in the way that I was able to see it. And maybe that comes from being a survivor of abuse. Um, and I really don't want to get into that. I don't want to make everything like super, super sappy. But like for me, I feel like I'm able to look at her immediately and just tell exactly what she's doing every single time. I'm a very firm believer that people are often speaking from a limited point of view, and I'm not going to sit here and act like nobody ever angers me ever even with knowing this fact i think it's important to remember that though when having interactions with other people we are all simultaneously experiencing the different facets of life which is why applying compassion is extremely important and crucial to good communication skills and i'm not saying that i'm perfect again <laughs> that's not the narrative i'm trying to push here i'm making this video for every daughter that has a toxic mother for everyone who has experienced manipulation from someone who was supposed to love and protect you i hope this video brings you clarity i hope it brings you comfort when dealing with abuse one of the main things that people tell themselves is that they are not being abused the biggest battle is the one that happens within yourself trying to make yourself understand how you let this happen and blaming yourself in the process. But if you feel that you are a victim of abuse, it is not your fault. So let's take a breath. You are valid. And this is just your disclaimer that this is not me talking about any of the actors themselves, but more so their characters. Please do not attack me in the comments. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, even those who disagree with me. But let's keep it friendly. All right, let's get started with the show. In this video, I am going to have examples of Emily's abuse along with sharing some of the research that I did while trying to gain evidence to back me up. Welcome to The Manipulation of Emily Gilmore, Season 1 Edition. Most people do not believe that mothers can be toxic, and most people who are victims of abuse from their mothers convince themselves that it's not really abuse. And there's the guilt tripping from society about cutting your mother off because people say things like, but she's still your mother, but she's still your mother. But mothers can be toxic. Anybody can be toxic it's not limited to just relationships. I'd like to address the first reason as to why people usually do not believe that Emily is abusive or that she's toxic in any way. One of the first examples that people always bring up is Chilton. As we all know in the show, one of the things that begins the story is Emily and Richard paying for Chilton because Lorelai really wants Rory to be able to go to Chilton. A lot of people feel like spending money on a person is a way of showing love. I am not one of those people, so... <laughs> That's where you would lose me if you were Emily. So let's talk about financial abuse and what that looks like. All of my sources are linked in my description. So if you guys would like to read further, you're more than welcome to, and it should be all in order. One of the first articles that I found was on financial abuse. One of the quotes that I really love from this article is where it says, financial abuse occurs in 98% of abusive relationships and is the number one reason why victims stay in or return to abusive relationships. Yet, 78% of Americans don't recognize financial abuse as domestic violence. Let's dive into the first example of Emily financially abusing Lorelai. When it's Rory's birthday, Lorelai for once in weeks that they've been doing the Friday night dinners asks for one Friday night off. She explains to Emily that she would be far more comfortable having a party at their house. Instead of Emily compromising, she reminds Lorelai that they have an agreement, which it would be fine if this was like a formal relationship where Emily was like a bill collector or a boss or something like that. But it's hard to sympathize when even as family, you still lack empathy. She basically threatens her with not paying for Chilton because of this one time. She's simply asking for one night not to come to dinner. So it's not a genuine act of kindness. The money is not being given. This is a formal agreement. This is not in a, oh, I'm your mom and I'm helping you out sort of way. This is, I'm your mom, but I'm holding this over your head kind of way. I mean, in the very first episode, she does not just help her daughter out for the sake of helping her out. She does it with requirements. Like it's not free help. She's not getting free help. People often try to make it seem like Emily was just giving money away for the price of nothing. And some people even look at it like, well, all she has to do is go 
to dinner. Like you act like she has to spend every single day with her. It's only one night out of the week, which will bring me to my next point. Almost every single time that Lorelai is around Emily, Emily has to critique Lorelai in some kind of way. Notice by how episode two, Lorelai has not made any digs about Emily. She hasn't attacked her. She hasn't been disrespectful. She hasn't mocked her. She hasn't been sarcastic, nothing. And the first time that she sees her daughter in episode two, she has to say something about the outfit she has on. I also read an article from BetterHelp on what is a toxic mother and how does her behavior affect healthy relationships? This article was really helpful because it was able to outline a lot of the things that I was able to see, but I was not able to articulate. In the very beginning of the article, it talks about how having a toxic mother can make you dread family get-togethers, a phone call from her. How many episodes do we have where Emily calls and Lorelai is like acting like the world is falling apart. They also listed common traits of a toxic mother. Number one, constant criticism. Like when she says, is that what you're wearing to Richard, for example. The manipulation doesn't just stop at Lorelai, it goes to everyone around her. Number two, controlling behavior. Her not letting them not come to Friday night dinner for one night. Her forcing Richard to go to the club with Rory. Despite Lorelai voicing her concerns and needs. Despite Richard obviously voicing that he does not want to go with Rory. Forcing Rory to have a birthday party at her house. Why does it have to be her house? She's not her mom. Number three, invalidation of emotions. Lorelai tells her clear as day how she feels and she says, interesting. You're afraid. When Lorelai is talking about Rory going golfing with Richard, she's not listening to her daughter or her needs. Number four, passive aggression. Whenever she's angry at Lorelai, a lot of the times what she will do is simply not talk to her at dinner. She'll speak to Rory, but she will not speak to Lorelai. Or if she does speak to her, her tone is very aggressive or passive where she barely says a full sentence. Number five, a toxic mother is also disrespectful of personal boundaries. Like when she decides to buy Rory a parking spot without even clearing that with Lorelai. Especially because like at uh, this time they hadn't been around each other in who knows how long. Maybe Lorelai doesn't think that Rory is responsible enough for a car. Which obviously was not the case. But like that's for Lorelai to decide as her mother. Her not asking Rory if she was comfortable having kids from her school at her party. The tone is often I know better than you and I am, I am better than you. She doesn't ask Lorelai what she actually needs help with. She just assumes that she knows better. She doesn't respect Lorelai as a mother. She undermines Lorelai as a mother in front of Rory multiple times. Like when Rory was stuck at their house and she was trying to say, This is a serious problem. These Friday dinners are the only proper food that child eats all week. She tries to force her way in. In episode three, her manipulation takes form very, very slowly at dinner. This is actually a pattern. But in this specific scenario, she warms them in with all this good talk about how much fun Richard said that he had with Rory. And she repeats a lot of the same kind of things over and over again all so that she can gloat and rub it in Lorelai's face that she was right she was right she was right she is constantly in competition with Lorelai trying to make it seem like she's the better mother like I said like she knows better and even when Lorelai is showing that she's uncomfortable with what she's doing she does not stop Lorelai literally asks for wine just to continue tolerating the situation in the same episode she says you want sure I mean, to have a place to go where she can socialize, that's very important to a young girl. Like, yeah, no sh She's trying to be funny. Once again, the tone is, I know better than Lorelai. I know better than Lorelai. As though Lorelai does not know her own child. And then look at the way that they leave the room, like with Rory. Lorelai just sits there feeling completely unwelcomed. They left her in that room all by herself. Why would she want to be around these people? Like, think about this. If all your parents do is sit around and mock you and tell you that you could have been so much better had you done X, Y, Z, they can't let go of who they wanted you to be and accept who you're trying to be or even even respect who you are. Why would you want to be around these types of people? Why would you want to purposely put yourself around people that make you miserable? Like, think about that. Because even Richard, like, in the very first episode, he talks about Christopher at dinner for literally no reason and insinuates that Lorelai is not as smart as Christopher and that's where Rory got her intelligence from. But my bad, I just kind of skipped around. One-sided relationship. The only time Literally the only time that Emily calls Lorelai is if she wants something, if she needs her to do something. As the parent in the relationship, she does not just simply reach out to her just to see how her daughter is doing. Every single phone conversation they have is mission based every single one. And if it's not mission-based, it's her getting on to her about something. Why would she want to answer the phone? I wouldn't answer the phone. Shrek taught us long ago that people are like onions. We have layers and past experiences that shape us into who we are. And the same goes for Emily. The problem is, 
We don't know why she taunts Lorelai the way that she does. Emily's abuse often takes form in similar patterns. And one of the first things that she always mentions is her as a mother, how she's being seen as a mother. And I think it's because internally she's aware that she may have some kind of fault in why her and Lorelai don't have a good relationship, but her pride gets in the way and she refuses to do anything to make herself vulnerable because if she's vulnerable, then it's almost like she feels naked in a way. Like, oh, now I can be critiqued and now I can be called out for being this flawed person that I am. And I think that really is a testament to people in general. Like in society, we are generally just so scared of changes. We're scared to look stupid. We're scared to make a mistake. We're scared for people to look around and see that we aren't always perfect. I've talked about this before about how collectively as a society, like we often have the fear of being imperfect. I think it's also connected to like cancel culture. Honestly, one second about cancel culture for a second. I think somewhere deep down, the people who believe in cancel culture do understand that by canceling someone, it does not mean that they don't exist. And I say that that's somewhere very, very deep down. Cancel culture was invented, I think, because people are outraged about not feeling heard and not feeling like anyone is listening to them. And it's like, they can't figure out what to do with you or how to change your mind. So it's not necessarily that they want you dead. They want the actions that you are committing to be dead to them. It's like they can't control what you do and they know that. So they want you to be canceled. But in reality, it doesn't work that way. Just because someone does something really, really bad doesn't mean that they just stop living and they die. And not everybody is open to seeking redemption for what they've done. Not everybody is open to changing. And I think a lot of that comes from the pure shame that we put on people behind being different and being imperfect, making mistakes. Mistakes are inevitable. I make mistakes every single day. I've said things sometimes to people that I didn't mean to say. I've offended people. I've hurt people. It's the way of life. There's not one person watching this video right now who's never had a situation that they really wish hadn't happened where they offended someone. All you can do is grow. And I think that is the pure divide between Lorelai and Emily. Emily lets her feel of being looked at as less than stop her from having a real relationship with her daughter. You cannot prevent yourself from making mistakes ever. It's never going to work. That's why I always leave the door open for someone to come in the comments and let me know if I've done something that may have offended someone. That's why on my channel, I really just want to encourage as much compassion as possible. I mean, like really think about this in the comments. If you knew that you had the ability to come out of a dark place, change yourself, turn your life around, and there was never going to be any shame towards you, what would you choose? If you knew that it was safe to change your mind and be indecisive, just try to figure yourself out, why would you not want to do that? And you know what I say to that? F that. Wait, not as in f the whole change thing. I mean, f the stigma, f the whole thing. Like, honestly, the more time goes on, I start to feel like you can make up your own world. You don't have to live by society's rules. Why would I let somebody shame me for something that is human and normal. But back to Emily, because we completely got off subject. And by we, I really mean me. Another reason that people really struggle to see the abuse that is committed by Emily is because they feel like no matter what the situation is, no matter how your parents talk to you, you should never talk back to them and you should never disrespect them. And a lot of times when you ask them to provide examples of what disrespect is, it'll be stuff like talking back, responding to a conversation, voicing your concern as the child in the relationship. And to those people, I cannot help those people. Those are the people that are going to still comment under this video and say, I love Emily Gilmore. I don't know why everybody doesn't like her. And they're never going to get the point. I cannot help them. I'm sorry. Those are the type of people that feel like cutting off your parents is not even an option. Another reason is because they lack the ability to see the long-term effects of generational trauma. They don't understand that by Emily not healing herself and becoming a better parent to Lorelai, that leaks over into future generations and their relationships with their mothers and their daughters. Basically, at some point, if the change does not start, things will only continue as they always have been. Some people will only ever see Lorelai as a spoiled brat. And I, like I just said, I cannot help those people. I really can't because it's just so many examples of her not being a spoiled brat, of her trying to get her money for herself, of her trying to be selfless for other people. I can't help you if that's what you think. Some people just simply feel like mothers cannot be toxic and they're entitled to their opinion. I struggle often with seeing the point in keeping people around that only make me miserable. I'm not denying that Emily may have wanted to be a good mom, but being a mom is not black and white. This whole conversation is not black and white. Being a mom is about bending. 
It's about being flexible in areas where you never thought you could be. All I'm gonna say is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And that's exactly what Emily has done. And the real question is, why are people more focused on how society is gonna look at them versus how their own children are looking at them right in their own home? If the argument is about Lorelai is just being difficult, Lorelai is just making a fuss about nothing, ask yourself, why is it more important that Lorelai makes Emily happy and keeps her happy and keeps her content, even when Lorelai herself is not happy? As I stated before, it really feels like Emily is always trying to have this competition with Lorelai. Let's dive into what I've learned about mothers who see their daughters as competition. I love this quote from this article on psychologytoday.com that says, these moms tend to raise daughters who either try too hard to meet their mom's unrealistic standards or daughters who simply give up trying. So what we can learn from that is that, like I said before, it's not going to be all black and white. Their reactions to abuse are not black and white. Some people freeze up, some people get louder. One of the main arguments people bring up in this whole debate about Lorelai is how she left her parents' house. Well, there you have it, right there. Lane is a very good example of having a toxic relationship with your mother and still wanting to please her. Lorelai is an example of giving up on that. In another article I found, it states, this jealousy is particularly difficult for the daughter as it carries a double message. Do well so that mother is proud, but don't do too well or you will outshine her. Another aid to Lorelai's defense on her leaving her parents' house at 17. Another part of it says, most children want to please their parents. So if given this mixed message, it is easier and perhaps safer to do nothing and therefore not expose oneself to criticism. Case in point, case and point. Case in point, because literally that's what she did. She blocked them out of her life. She moved away to Stars Hollow, a place she'd never even lived before. But this part of my research was actually very, very, very intriguing because of the parallel that I found here. Grab a seat and listen closely. To some of you, this is really not going to be a big surprise, but to me, it was like mouth open, mouth on the floor when I made the connection here. There's a quote that says, often men in relationships with female narcissists choose to cater to the mother so as to maintain the adult relationship. That leaves the father unable to connect with his daughter. And of course, this leaves the daughter with a lack of emotional connection with both parents. That is literally her relationship with Richard. When I tell you my jaw was on the floor when I realized this, and this part I already knew, but this also assisted with like backing me up on what I'm talking about here. There's a quote that says, a common pattern in narcissistic families is constant comparison to others. Envy rears its ugly head in other contexts as well. For example, how does our family measure up to others? And do we look good enough to the outside world? Um, hello? This is literally Emily talking about how this is going to be Roy's first time getting shown off at the club. Like, come on. How many times in this series have we watched Emily say things about how the others look in the family? Lorelai has all of these rules set up about maintaining independence and everything in between because she does not feel safe with people having control over her life. Letting other people have control over her life reminds her of her childhood. Do you guys hear me? Is this thing on? Like, do you guys hear what I'm saying? I don't get how people get mad at Lorelai for acting so childish because, I mean, first of all, look at what the girl's been through. And second of all, do y'all not hear how her parents talk to her? They talk to her like she's still 16 all the time. They still try to tell her what to do. They try to tell her what she's not gonna do. Her mom is constantly butting into her love life and I know some people are gonna be like okay but like okay that that's not really enough for me to be convinced so you know I did some more research I did research on how narcissistic mothers can affect their daughter's lives in the future like beyond just their toxic dynamic and guess what I found out I read an article on toxicties.com they very creatively use an example about how in the original Snow White it was Snow White's actual mother not her stepmother and I think that really just ties back in with what I was saying earlier about how people are really convinced that mothers cannot be toxic like being a mother is held to such a high regard that like people feel like there's no room for critique when it comes to a mother and that's not true even in Lorelai's case as much as I love Lorelai and I love how she parents Rory she still doesn't always do stuff that I agree with I don't think anybody's a perfect mom but back to this article one quote says there are hordes of insecure narcissistic women I out there whose self-esteem is wrapped up in their child's appearance. Another quote says, however, the mother is usually in complete denial about her part in her daughter's struggles. Listen to this, y'all. She may even be offended 
by the very idea that she did anything wrong as a parent. For the most part, narcissistic mothers are blissfully ignorant of the havoc they wrecked on their daughter's lives. In the Rory's birthday party episode, when Rory seemed uneasy about meeting her friends, Emily did not stop. She didn't ask her anything. She didn't make sure she was okay. She just pushed her on in there. Versus in 107, Lorelai coaches Rory instead of making her just get over her anxiety so quickly. She recognizes her emotions and she doesn't downplay them. She talks her through it. In 109. Emily demands that Dean come in and meet her. She takes a shot at Dean and says that Dean is not very bright, which is insulting to him. And it's insulting to Rory because that's her boyfriend. Then she tells Rory what time to be home. She does not trust that Lorelai knows what she's doing. She tries to insinuate that Lorelai would let Rory date a guy who drinks. Like, it's just like, it's so disrespectful. And also she's in her house acting like Lorelai is this unfit parent. The one thing that she does is actually nice in that episode though, is when she stays and tries to take Take care of Lorelai. And that's what makes the toxic relationship so confusing. And I think what keeps Lorelai in it is because sometimes she does get glimpses of what her mother caring about her emotion looks like. But then it's like, before you can get comfortable, here she goes again. When she's talking about the monkey lamp, she's talking about, I gave you something of substance, like saying that what she originally gave her was better than anything that she could have replaced it with. Like, how does that sound? And Lorelai is not just mean spirited. Why would she return a gift if she actually liked it? If it was something that she could use, if it was something that actually fit within her house like imagine gifting Lorelai a grandfather clock of all things like honestly what would she do with that where would that even go and in 111 we're right back to the same old thing she's talking to Lorelai like she's literally just a child in this episode Lorelai is clearly voicing that she's uncomfortable that she doesn't really want to talk about it this is what Lorelai has been talking about this entire season whenever she needs space from her parents and she needs time to breathe and recuperate like get her thoughts together whatever they don't stop like look at Emily look what she does she just keeps pushing her trying to talk about this kiss with Max even with tears in her eyes she's still insulting her telling her that it's all her fault she doesn't think like when your heart is broken that is the last thing you were trying to hear at that moment and I get it like yes she's right like Lorelai should be a little bit more conscious of like her environment and whatever like no that wasn't okay but like you can clearly see that she's in pain be empathetic in 114 she literally begs Lorelai to just open up to her and talk to her all for her to say we're finally honest with me now we can discuss what on earth you could possibly be thinking. In 116, she's undermining Lorelai again. She literally sits there and laughs in Lorelai's face when Lorelai says that she can get her own man. This is Lorelai trying to set a boundary. She's not trying to be rude. She's not trying to be disrespectful. But Emily simply does not care because it doesn't affect her. And in 118, she tries to convince Lorelai that money could stop Rory from wanting to be close with Lorelai that money could come between them. And in 119, Emily sees where they were living all that time. And instead of her thinking to herself like, why would my daughter choose to live this way over living with me? What made the home that I created for her so unsafe that she would go to a place like this? People often say like, oh, well, Lorelai had everything and then she decided to just run away for no reason at all. Why is the thinking not that Lorelai did have quote unquote everything? Because money is not everything. Let me be very clear. But why is the thinking not she had had quote unquote everything and the abuse was so bad that she still left. She had a baby and she was willing to be poor before she lived another day where her parents undermined her and disrespected her. The house was not safe. It was not safe for her. Mentally, it was not safe. It was not a household that was warm and welcoming where you talked about your boy problems and you got to cry because you really needed to have a really good cry about something. Lorelai does not dismiss Rory's emotions. That's why they have a much better relationship. In 119, in this episode, Lorelai literally says, Just once I could make my mother hear me. I mean, really hear me. 13 signs of a toxic mother that most people don't realize. It talks about stonewalling, which if you guys don't know what stonewalling is, there's a quote here that says, the petty behavior of the silent treatment taken way too far is called stonewalling. Here, the mother may pretend as if you were not present or be deaf to whatever you were talking about. Number 13 on the list talks about covert and passive aggression. It states, when your mother uses indirect forms that consist of dismissing what you say or interrupting you when you are speaking or your parents have a covert interparental conflict. Emily does this all the time literally all the time. Watch any episode where they are arguing. She does this all the time. There are so much more I could like really touch on, but it's in other seasons. If you guys would like this to be a series, comment that down below. Also comment down below if anything I said stuck out to you. 
What are your thoughts on the manipulation of Emily Gilmore? I have also linked some resources in my description box. I'm really hoping that this video helps some people feel more seen. And if you're dealing with something like this, trust me, I get it. I understand. And I am really honestly, truly wishing you the best. It's not easy. It's not easy fighting a battle with someone that you love and you don't want to have a negative relationship with. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.